All right, welcome back, everybody. On to our last and final, well, not last step, our final step in the main, the overall assembly. Our last step will be getting the controller to pair with all the components and the computer program in order to make these things work. So as you notice, there's some uh, additions to the tools that we're going to need. So I have them laid out here, make it real easy for us. Going to need a pair of 9 16 wrenches, combo wrenches. I did one standard and one ratcheting again. A couple of half inch combo wrenches, one standard, one ratcheting. Your trusty croissant wrench. Some blue shop towels. The old funnel for filling our master cylinder. And since I'm inside working on this, come up with something to make yourself the old catch pan. So I have to have a couple old plastic bins sitting around. So I just grab the lid from one and this is going to be our spill catcher. And speaking of spills, I just want you to know that with this brake system install, it does come with Willwood DOT5 silicone brake fluid. So what is the significance of that? Well, the significance of that is silicone will not damage your paint or finishes. So if you happen to spill, not that we would do that ever, uh, <laughs> it won't damage anything. So good deal. All right, so let's get started. So our first part of business is going to get the uh, slave cylinder installed and this will be installed into the top left motor plate mounting bolt or mounting slug supposedly here so this will go this fastener will go right through that slug and into the back of your slave cylinder so let's get to it all we're going to need for this one is the old simple half inch wrench and I did add a did I add this lock washer no the fat the uh, flat washer and lock washer actually came with this fastener so we'll get it installed and like you said uh, or the instructions tell us to do so right here is going to be your top hole and we're going to for the motor plate to attach to but we are going to utilize that for our slave cylinder. And when you do this installation you're going to want to make sure that the bleeder that is on top of the slave cylinder here is facing up. And when I get to the point where my major components are installed down the road, uh, then I'll start worrying about cosmetics and then I might actually have to take the slave cylinder back out and uh, fashion up something uh, where a motor plate would be uh, just to cover any additional wires that I add as well as um, a little bit of overlapping might occur from a dash. So I am going to actually put in a dash at some point in time, but right now I want to get the main components installed into this sprint car chassis, and then we can continue sim racing. So we'll get that nice and tightened up here. Excellent. And I wouldn't worry about any of the tension in here. Uh, this can be adjusted later on uh, for resistance. If you want more resistance on your, your brake pedal, uh, you adjust the swing nut here and it'll apply, help you apply more pressure. But right now, we're just going to go through the process as it is listed in the manual. All right, this step is done. And the next thing that we're going to need to worry about is the uh, sensor assembly right here. 
and this will get attached onto your slave cylinder. So all only thing we're going to need for this is a half inch wrench and it is recommended that this be very level. So we'll go ahead and grab our trusty level to see if that'll fit in there. If not, we'll do our best to eyeball it. All right, so this sensor assembly is gonna be attached right to the slave cylinder. And when your package arrives, you'll notice that the slave cylinder has fluorescent uh, yellow tape over the connections, and that's where you're gonna wanna attach this sensor assembly to. So we'll peel off the tape, make sure that we don't leave any on the threads. And it looks like yeah, we might be close to not having enough room to run a level on here. But we will it's definitely find out here shortly. We don't want to crank that down completely tight yet. Oh, we have just enough room to get our torpedo level in here. And let me check my Simulator frame here first. All right, so I'm going to have to push down on the right front again just to get the linkage in the motion uh, simulator U joints and linkage to properly reflect an accurate level. So we're good there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down and then I'll recheck the level. Just to make sure that we didn't alter the mounting of this sensor. And it looks like we did alter it a little bit, so we can hopefully come a little bit to the right to get it back to sensor. I might have to break it loose and rotate it a little bit. All right, let's try this again. This torpedo level does not want to sit on here the best. All right, we'll try that again. Hopefully we'll be, I was gonna say, hopefully we'll be a little bit more careful this time and I just bumped it out of level. Come on. There we go. Oh man, I did it again. Well, good thing for you if you have a uh, just a flat chassis without it being on a motion, uh, you won't have to mess around like this like I am. This stuff will probably go way easier for you than it is for me. All right. Let's go with that. See if we can get it right. Okay, I think yeah, we'll call that success. Perfect. So we'll return our tools here and move on to step number three. For this step, we're going to need our trusty Black Max brake line. We're going to need our master cylinder, and eventually we are going to need your bleeder bottle, 
a couple of half inch wrenches. Your brake fluid. And funnel. And we got a couple items, other items to get. But my hands are getting pretty darn full right now. So we'll get this stuff in place. We can actually stick our bleeder bottle right there for now. So we have left to get my catch pan because we are going to end up bleeding this master cylinder here. So I'll get this positioned in place to catch any drips, hopefully. Got our shop towel. Actually, I'll probably lay out a couple links here up on this wood cabinet so we don't uh, cause any unnecessary damage to it. And we'll need a spot anyways to set our funnel when we're done. And we'll just peel off a couple more sheets and keep it in our floor pan in case we need it for our hands. We're wiping up any drips that we cause. Alright, so we need to make preparations for the the bleeding process. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the heim with the fastener. Which is right here. And then we'll try to keep everything in the same order that we removed it. On the floor there. So we'll pull the master cylinder into our chest just to compress this spring. And now we'll remove, we removed our jam nuts and now we're going to remove our return spring assembly. Because we are going to need to stroke this master cylinder just to get any air out of it. So this master cylinder does come with spacers already. And you should be able to bolt it right onto the existing uh, master cylinder tabs that you're going to have on your chassis. If you do not have any, you're going to have to get some walled on tabs and uh, get them attached. And I did add a couple of washers to our fasteners here just because I don't want to damage the paint surface as we get this bolted on. And you got some protrusion of the threads, but it's not bad enough where it's going to affect any of the Zeus clips. because I am eventually going to be attaching uh, side panels uh, to this chassis. All right, so we got that good. Grab our half inch wrenches, get this tightened down. And we are going to have to yeah, it's kind of one one uh, fastener is in a bad position right over or right close to the Zeus spring. So we'll have to start with that one first and 
choose the open end of our combo wrench. And it is also worth noting that uh, this is another component that uh, is critical to have leveled out. So we'll get this fastener snugged up and then we'll go ahead and level it. Obviously there isn't a, a ton of room uh, to level this master cylinder, but we will make do with uh, what we can. Gotta lean back here so you're not looking at my uh, top of my hat. We have some movement there, which will allow us to level this master cylinder. a little bit more so it starts grabbing on the tabs. I have a feeling we're going to be pretty pretty close to being level. Like I said, not that there's a ton of adjustment to accomplish a level, but there is some. All right, we'll push down here again. So yeah, I think we'll lock it in there. We'll lock in the front bolt for a fastener. And then any finite adjustments we'll make on the back fastener. Looks like the back could go down a little bit. Yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good. So we'll go with that. If our level is close enough. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and grab our Black Max brake line and you notice that there's a straight connection end and a 90. You are going to want to attach this 90 onto the master cylinder. And again, the port that you need to land this in has fluorescent yellow tape on. I'm sure that's to keep any dust or dirt out of the connection during shipping. And we can get this bad boy started here. All right, so we got the thread started. And one last step before you tighten this down is we're gonna actually need to bleed this master cylinder now. And to accomplish that, you just wanna get that 90 threaded, bring up your brake line, stick it right into the top of your master cylinder, and then we'll continue to tighten that connection up. And I believe still be a half inch here which is what I have okay so 
So now we'll grab our trusty funnel. And our brake fluid. And we'll fill up this reservoir. Uh, maybe about three quarters of the way full. For now, we are actually going to add additional fluid to the master cylinder when we go ahead and bleed out the braking system completely. So pretty much all our mission now is to get any air out of this master cylinder and we removed the spring and the lock nuts and the heim from this shaft end and the reason for that it just makes stroking this master cylinder way easier. So let's get busy and get bleeding. So you are going to have to put a little bit of uh, pressure in here. Do not expect it to be easy. And if it starts hurting your hand a little bit like it is mine, you can fold over your shop towel and use that as a cushion for your hand. Ooh, much better. So I stroked it a little bit here, and it sounds like we're getting air out. I don't think it's completely out yet, uh, but we're going to remove this funnel now that it drained into the reservoir. And we're going to look at our return line to make sure that we have solid fluid coming out of it. Try to grip this again. Still sounds like there's quite a bit of air in there. So you want to make sure that that end is actually in the fluid. Creates kind of a closed loop, so to speak. And that way, no matter if you're on the downstroke or upstroke, it's taking in fluid. So we'll do this probably for a couple more minutes just to make sure that there's a less foam showing up in this master cylinder reservoir. Foam means air. So we want to make sure that we see a reduction in the foam to the point where there is no more foam left on the surface. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Nice solid strokes. I don't hear any air sputtering coming through the line or feel anything coming through the line. So I think uh, we are pretty good to go now. So now the tricky part. We'll expand our blue shop towel here a little bit. And now we're going to swing the Black Max brake line down to your slave. And then from there, we'll refill our reservoir. And we'll reassemble uh, the return spring and the lock nuts in the heim that we took off. And then we'll go ahead and assemble our brake pedal. So 
Let's quick crack this slightly loose. I think I'm going to go over here just to make it easier for a quick swing down. At least hopefully I'm, it'll be easier for us. Make the swing. Do our best to make sure that we don't cross thread this connection. That would be no good. So it feels like it is started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab my 716 combo wrench from behind me. And then get this tightened up a little bit. Then I'm just making sure that this brake line is kind of vertical and not leaning one way or the other. Because I don't want to stretch out the brake line and not be able to tighten this appropriately. Alright, looks like we unintentionally adjusted the side to side level on the sensor, but I think we'll be just fine. All right, we'll go ahead and wipe the fluid off of our tools here. Important to keep tools that you use in good condition, just like anything. All right, we'll wipe all the fluid up from our brake lines. I'm going to have to go ahead and make sure I tighten up uh, the half inch connection on the master cylinder. Alright. So very good, very good. All right, we did that without making a mess. We are making some good progress. Get rid of some of the garbage here. Dispose of it properly. All right, now on to reinstalling our return spring. And installing our Heim joint. After these stops get installed. Or jam nuts, I should say. They're not stops, they're jam nuts. So we're using one of these jam nuts to, to jam the return spring plate right here. And we're using the other jam nut to jam uh, the Heim joint once we make an adjustment to the overall length of it to accommodate our brake pedal. So I'm going to take the fastener out of the Heim joint for now. And I did add two more flat washers uh, to this assembly. I want a washer on either side of your Heim just to keep it nice 
they probably don't necessarily have to do it. You don't necessarily have to do it. Uh, but I feel better having that kind of sandwiched in there. All right, I'm not sure we're, we're going to end up with the brake pedal. So we are going to leave that there right now. Put our other hardware close by. And return our tools here to the bench or table. All right, so we are definitely over halfway done with the brake installation. We have the brake pedal to assemble next. And this is where I actually ran into some challenges with this chassis in particular. Uh, standard chassis, uh, if you are able to see here from a camera angle, have two tabs that sit on either side of your brake pedal stem that comes up. Uh, with this, for some reason, there's a spud on the right side as I'm facing the chassis that's in line with only a singular tab that we're going to need for mounting the brake pedal. So normally you would have two tabs that, you know, kind of sandwich that brake pedal stem, but we do not have that. So I had to go ahead and pick up some extra hardware. So I picked up some 3 ace flat washers. I picked up some 3 ace uh, thick plastic spacers. I picked up some 3 ace acrylic or plastic flat washers. And I picked up a lock nut for the end of it. So the problem I ran into is obviously you could use the existing hardware that this uh, whole thing came with from Maverick Sims. Um, if you have a standard chassis that has those brake tabs already installed and you can sandwich the stem of your brake pedal in there, you'll be just fine. You won't have to buy any of this extra garbage. Uh, but I did actually have to go out and purchase these other components just to, for the configuration that I discovered in the chassis. It's a 07 chassis, so I'm not really familiar with uh, why that spud is there or if it was like a different brake assembly that they had on there that only required one tab and a spud being welded on. But like anything, you get into projects and you got to make adjustments as you go along to accomplish the work. So... Uh, that's what we did. So we are going to go ahead and gather our brake pedal here. Just your standard run-of-the-mill brake pedal. You don't need titanium or other anything like that because obviously you're sitting in a simulator. So we got our brake pedal and now we're going to have to get all of these hardware components and I had to buy a 3 ace five inch bolt and I cut it down. So I'm just gonna slide all this stuff on here just for easy transportation to where we're doing our work. So again, I cut down a 5 inch 3 8 bolt just to accommodate here. Normally uh, when I run bolts, I run the head towards the inside of the chassis and the threaded towards the outside where you're not going to make contact, but I don't have that option now because there's only so much room that I'm going to have on this spud, especially if I want to put side panels on. So we got our flat washer, and send the bolt through, another flat washer, and then our group of 3 ace uh, acrylic 
spacers in here. And before it goes through the brake tab, we're going to put another washer, flat washer in there. And as it extends through, we'll put another flat washer on the other side of the brake tab. We're going to install our acrylic flat washer. We'll install our brake pedal. We'll push the fastener all the way through. And the other side, we're going to align it with another acrylic flat washer and a standard metal 3 8 washer. And I'm going to do that so there's free movement as I depress the brake pedal. Um, I don't want any binding going on, so my solution to accomplish that is to add these plastic washers in here. And then we'll put in our 3 8 lock nut. And we'll go ahead and tighten this down. We're going to require, I believe it's the 9 16 wrenches for this. It is. So I want to make sure that there is enough free movement on this brake pedal to allow it to float back and forth. But I want to make sure that there's enough rigidity added to it. So I actually might lock this down all the way just to close this brake tab up because it's not quite square to the frame. Looks like it was damaged at one time. So we'll pull it tight by cranking down this fastener all the way. And we'll cycle it here back and forth. So it is pretty tight. So we'll go ahead and we're going to go ahead now and back the uh, back this fastener off. And I position the, the brake pedal close to your seat. And once that brake pedal starts falling to um, a horizontal position or a vertical position, then we'll, we'll know we're good. Okay, so it started falling. I think there's some pretty good movement on it. Uh, much improvement. Uh, a good improvement when I sucked that brake tab in with this bolt and then tightened it all the way down and backed it off from there just to get my free movement that I want. So now we'll go ahead and uh, bolt up this heim joint uh, to the brake pedal. And I think I'm going to put this heim joint in line I might have to see what I'm going to get here for. And I might actually have to go through and break these bolts loose again. Because I think I'm just about out of adjustment on this time. And I don't want it to fall off the end, so we're out of adjustment right now. And I think you'd probably, yeah, that'd be pretty close. I'd actually like to see the pedal in line with your throttle. But 
but I don't think I'm going to be able to accomplish that. So we're going to have to make do with what we have and go from there. this run all the way through. I'm going to keep one washer in here. Actually I should run this fastener from the other way. There we go. And honestly, I think I'm going to have to take the spacers out that this came with. And I'm going to have to put a bunch of flat washers in there. Because I'm not liking how the master cylinder is kind of angled, at least the shaft is, so I think that's going to cause problems for us. But I am going to go ahead and tighten down the fastener here for the hind joint. Oops, I was incorrect. We are going to, I don't think we're going to need uh, 916s anymore. So we'll put these back and go with our, our half inch wrenches. Yeah, so I would have to really tighten uh, this plaster down. I'm going to take some time and uh, go ahead and get this master cylinder uh, spaced appropriately. By building, uh, building out the area where the spacers were with washers instead. I have a little bit more control. over the distances with building that out with spacers or building that out with washers. So yeah, unfortunately we got to drop the spacer out of here and try to get this master cylinder in straight line uh, with our brake pedal. So stay tuned. It will be right back. Let me get this taken care of and we'll go ahead with the bleed procedure. Stay tuned for more. finally back from our trip to the local hardware store. I was looking for a uh, 5 16 by 24 threaded rod and a thread nut as well. And the whole point of that was to extend the shaft of the master cylinder forward two inches because we didn't have enough travel once we attached the heim of the master cylinder to the brake pedal itself. So to come up with another solution, I went to the shop then I fabricated myself a new mounting bracket that we're going to use to move that master cylinder to a more desirable location to allow enough brake pedal travel. So we're going to go ahead and grab our brand new fabricated bracket. We're going to grab some hardware here that we used before. Lay 
this out on the floor. And I am going to need some additional 516 flat washers uh, to take the place of the spacer that came with this whole assembly. So the spacer ended up being uh, too great of a thickness. So that's why we're going to go with the old uh, down and dirty trick of using flat washers for our spacers. Tighten this down a little bit so it starts grabbing. good. We are level. Beautiful. All right, we'll put our cap back on the master cylinder. Holy cow. We just about have it mounted to the pedal where we want it. Things are looking up. All right, and now we're gonna attach, the Heim joint is attached to the brake pedal already via fastener. Then we're gonna go ahead and tighten that fastener up. And I do have that Heim joint um, sandwiched in between uh, two flat washers, just a personal preference. Uh, you don't have to do that yourself, obviously. And the brake, brake pedal distance from the uh, front of the chassis looks pretty good to me. It's easy enough to make that adjustment. If you want to change it up. So I want to lock down our lock nuts. So we'll need our 7 16 wrenches for that. And one lock nut is going to, oh, I guess we were good with our half inch. I stand corrected. That's pretty convenient. So one lock nut is going to lock the heim in place. And I do need channel locks here to hold the heim joint. Well, I tighten the lock nut. All right. And the only thing left to do is to try to snug up the lock nut for the return spring plate. I think we are good there. So finally, we are done with all the mechanical assembly of the linkages. Let's toss that right there for now. I'll clean it up later. All right, so our last final step is going to be going ahead and bleeding the entire brake system. If you've bled brakes on cars before, this is no different. Uh, so what I'm going to do is grab our bleed bottle here. And the instructions that are supplied uh, from All Star Performance. 
let you know that there is a vent and a one-way valve. So you're going to want to take your hose that's on the vent, pop that off, and that's going to actually go on your top of your bleeder. Then you're going to want to make sure that you don't have it hooked up the other way. Otherwise, you're going to introduce air into the system because you're not going to have that one-way valve assisting you with getting your system let out. So if you have a quarter inch wrench, which I do not have one with me here, like I said, all my good tools are at the shop. So we are going to substitute a crescent wrench. And we're going to loosen that up a little bit. And I actually am going to leave this crescent wrench attached. I'm going to clamp it down as hard as I can for now. So now we're ready for the brake bleeding procedure. So it says to open the bleeding, or uh, we are supposed to be opening our. slave cylinder bleed screw and then from there we're going to depress the brake pedal and hold it depressed and allow fluid to start purging all the air out of our slave cylinder and then once we have it depressed we're going to hold it and then we're going to close the bleed valve on top and then we should be pretty good to go I think I am going to go ahead and instead use my channel locks. But to prevent mess, we're going to go ahead and get our drip pan. Try to get this positioned in here. In such a way that if we do end up getting fluid everywhere, which we hopefully do not do. We'll have a catch pan as well as uh, these nice blue shop rags or shop towels. All right, well, let's begin. So I don't think there's anything um, really critical at this point. Uh, the main thing that we need to do is level our master cylinder. So we're going to go ahead and take this cap off. So if we need to add fluid as we go through this procedure, uh, we can easily add it. So we're going to go ahead and open up our bleeder. And that is in there pretty good. I think I'm going to have to get it started with this crescent wrench. That is in there really good. Oh man. This is making me a little nervous that it is this tight. Alright, we will go ahead and 
crack that to press our brake pedal. I'm going to have to go ahead and close this bleeder. Do it again. Open the bleeder. Should see brake fluid pushing the air bubbles out of the slave cylinder. And I'm getting little bubbles in there because I'm kind of opening up the side of this uh, tube when I'm grabbing it with the channel lock so I don't think that's coming from the system Do this one more time. And it looks like we have consistent brake fluid, solid brake fluid uh, running through this line. So we are going to call this procedure done. So yeah, we did pretty good without making a major mess anywhere. All right, we'll turn our catch pan over here. All right, let's see where we're at. Oh, it looks like we're still good on the level. In the reservoir, I overfilled it before in anticipation uh, that we're going to lose some fluid in the bleed process, and we did good. All right, excellent. Okay, so we'll do a quick recap on everything. Um, we had definitely a way more challenging install on this brake assembly compared to the throttle assembly. Uh, pretty much night and day difference. Uh, I did forget to put in the cord here that's going to actually connect the pressure sensor. And then this is going to all get routed and tied into the control box. But I'm trying to get this locked in here. All right, we're good. And then uh, I'm not sure on this routing here. I know it said that we needed to uh, keep the pressure sensor uh, level but it looks like we're going to have some interference on the spring. So I think I might actually rotate this in a bit if I can, because that's just going to cause problems, I think, in the future. Or actually, yeah, we might be all right, because we're going to end up zip tying this to the frame or the chassis anyway so yeah we'll be fine
Okay. So I put a, a 90 bend on the top. And once I get some zip ties in here, I'll probably just zip tie it to the frame right there, run this in the front, and then we'll go from there. Actually, while we're waiting, uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Since we do have a little bundle of zip ties that were included with this kit. With that, we'll need our side cutters as well. Yeah, I'm pretty happy now that that cable is not contacting our master cylinder return spring. Trim off the tail. All right. Here, and I'll clean that up later. Okay, so our main challenges that we ran into uh, with the spring car build is the uh, mounting tabs uh, for the brake pedal. I only have one tab. Normally you're supposed to have two tabs and that makes bolting on this pedal extremely easy. Unfortunately um, we did not have that but there was a spud that was welded onto the side frame that was directly horizontal to the hole in our tab so we ended up having to bridge this gap to add some rigidity to this tab here. So we ended up having to go and buy some nylon spacers uh, to take up that distance. It was about a little over an inch and a quarter. So it was quite a distance that we had to bridge. And then I picked up some nylon flat washers, uh, some 3 8 flat washers, metal ones, regular metal ones. And we just created this nice sandwich in here of the brake pedal to allow enough movement so that was a nice easy fix that one was accomplished by taking a quick trip to the hardware store and coming back and the master cylinder i tell you <laughs> i didn't know if i was ever going to get done with it so what ended up happening is Inside the frame right here is your master cylinder tabs and you're supposed to be able to obviously mount the master cylinder directly to those tabs and have everything to line up correctly. In this case it did not. The tabs are almost probably an inch and a quarter back too far on the frame so I had to go and fabricate a whole new bracket to put in here. To move that master cylinder forward a little bit and the kit comes with master cylinder spacers that are supposed to go between your cylinder and the tabs that is too thick of a distance or too great of a distance so we ended up having to build that out with washers so we have a nice uh, alignment of the pedal and the heim joint uh, with those big spacers our heim joint would have been really cocked really bad and i just want a nice straight smooth cycle when you're pushing on the brake pedal so that was probably the biggest challenges here a lot more fabrication work went into getting this master cylinder to work along with multiple trips to the hardware store uh, to get all these other different fasteners and stuff that we needed to build out um, the master cylinder and build out the brake pedal as well. But that's going to conclude the mechanical portion of the install. And overall I'm pretty pretty happy with the installation. Uh, obviously with anything uh, custom and bolt-on, uh, you're going to have your challenges, but we met those challenges with a little ingenuity. So, 
The next step is going to be connecting all these wires up, running our PC control box and getting into the program to get these all working and talking together and then we can hit the track racing once again. So thanks for tuning in and pull up our next video. It's going to go over everything that we need to do to get all these components working together and talking to the computer so our simulation program can utilize the throttle and brake that we have. So thanks for tuning in and it has been quite the adventure so far. I'd highly recommend um, if you are going to make a sprint car simulator, I would highly recommend these products uh, to get yourself a little closer to real components that you'd find on a sprint car. So again, it's been fun and we'll see you on the next one.